All right, when you look at a scale sheet, and we'll put the, the, the picture of the scale sheet up on the, when we do the video. You will see that there's an order for sharps and flats. And when you try to analyze this, it is so amazing how it worked. And when you look at, when you think about music, it is just incredible how, and it's all mathematically based. It's just amazing how it all worked. And when you're done today, you're gonna go, oh my gosh, how did that happen? How did they get it? So it just all fit like a puzzle and works. And that's why I want more time with you so you can get the whole puzzle. <coughs> all right, so if you look at the, Remember a minute ago we said the word key signature and the word scale are the same. Yes. All right. So when you pick up a piece of music, the very first thing you need to look at is the very beginning of the music. You see, uh, this is called a time signature. Tells you what tempo to to play the music in. Stop. Go. Okay, so when you see 4-4 four, four time, that's the meter to play, four beats to the measure, quarter note gets one. But the next thing you might see are sharps just hanging around, or some flats, up to seven. Sharps and seven flats. No thank you, I'm not playing those songs. But this is called the key signature. Now, as a beginner, you really only need to know one thing when you see that. What is that? You have to sharp all the F's and all the C's. Composers are lazy. They don't want to put little tic-tac-toe signs next to all the F's and all the C's. So they tell you at the beginning of the song, and you're supposed to remember, correct? OK. The other thing that this tells you is that the composer used the scale that has two sharps in it to write the song. So look at your scale sheet. All right, and go down the column until you find the scale that has two sharps. D. Now this is going to be really important when we get to the circle. So remember that. 
B-E-A-D spells what? Bead. Okay, I learned a long time ago because I got a flat tire because of it. The inside rim of your tire on your car is called bead. And if you hit one of those gutters that kind of comes up, you know, onto the sidewalk, it will puncture the bead and your tire will go flat immediately. So here's how I remember flats. B-E-A-D, if you break it, it goes completely flat. G-C-F. Aren't you glad to have me for a teacher? <laughs> Complete the flat. Okay? Now, now we got all this information up here, and if you don't know all this, this is kind of like mind-boggling, huh? So would you like to learn it the hard way, or do you want to cheat? Hmm. Bunch of cheaters in here. Okay, I'll show you the shortcuts. When you sit on something sharp, what happens? You go up, right? You uh, unless you have a dead end, you 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 will rise or you will go up. If your tire goes flat, what happens? It goes down. All right. So here's how you find any key signature. If someone tries to trick you, go. Oh, you're going to that hokey music school in Newcastle, how much can you learn when there's 40 people in a class? You can say, test me. All right, the order for sharps, fat cats go down alleys eating birds. If you don't have a scale sheet with you and you want to know what key the song is in or what scale was used to write the song, let's say there's only two sharps, okay? First thing you have to know is you sharp all the S and C's. So under your breath, you're going to go, fat cats, <laughs> F's and Z's, all right? Or just, they're the name the same as the note. If that was a note, it would be an F, and if that was a note, it would be a C. So you could just name them and, and if you forget, fat cats. All right, then you name the last sharp, which is what? C. C. If I ask you what key it's in, you just say the next letter in the alphabet. G. What comes after C? You have to know the alphabet. <laughs> what comes after C in the alphabet? D. D. So two sharps is the key of D. D. Now, you have to think like a child now. If you're thinking too much, stop that. Because all you have to do is just say, I got what she said, and I'm going to do it. Don't try to analyze it. You're cheating, remember? So one, two, three, four sharps. F, C, G, D. If I ask you what key it's in, what letter follows D in the alphabet? D. E. Okay? That's how you do it. Flat. Always go to the next to the last flat. B, E, A, D. It is the key of A flat. You name the last, next to the last flat. B, E, A, D, key of A flat. If there's five flats, B, E, A, D, G, what key are you in? D flat, not D, D's over here. Okay, the only, the only key that has no flat after it is the first one. It's the key of F. All the other ones have flats. E flat, A flat, D flat. So far, so good. something really cool? What are we ordering for sharps? Fat cats go down alleys eating birds. Look, order for flats. Fat cats go down alleys eating birds. It's just backwards from the order for sharks. And you're sitting there going, well, that's cool. Well, it isn't going to get you anywhere. It's just kind of trivia information. But isn't it amazing how it worked? And don't even try and figure it out. I tried. I read books trying to figure out who even, it, who even invented it. I don't know, but it's kind of cool when you look at it. It's, it's, a, it's all mathematics.